Hey everybody, Aaron Carlson here from Around the Real. Just want to reach out to each and every one of you to make sure you click over to anchor.fm backslash ccc entertainment group there's a little metric tool there that you can click on to support our podcast it would really help us out and keep our production company rolling so we can put out the best content possible and also build budgets to these new movies that are should be filming and coming out in 2021 that is of course that this fucking pandemic will ever fucking stop So reach out to us there and support our podcast. We'd really, really appreciate anything you can do in these tough times. And as well as that, you guys keep thinking hard because you're thinking anyway. Welcome to Around the Reel with your hosts, Aaron Carlson, Charles Lawson, and Samantha Hannah. You know, reasoning. See, that sounds like our life. <laughs> yeah, reasoning with women is never something that's going to turn out well for a man, Sam. It's because you're using the term reason in it. Oh, yeah, it's never going to work out well for you. It's not going to happen, Sam. <laughs> well, I know. It's like a double edged sword, right? Yeah, yeah, on fire with grenades attached to it. <laughs> but you can't do anything without us, so... Mm. Th- th- that's not necessarily true. We that can is, do stuff. Well, you can do... Yeah, you can be children. <laughs> giant, you can be giant toddlers. Giant toddlers. That's Chuck. He's the one that shits his pants. Well. <laughs> Excuse me. Something doesn't need to be... Not, never mind. We talked about it all already. We already did. It's fine. <laughs> Amrik, how you doing, my brother? Great. How about you guys? Dude, we are doing, doing well. Good. We are doing well. Sorry for being late. Um, This is a weekly episode today. Yeah. On what show? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're on Around the Real right now. Welcome to Around the Real, by the way. Welcome to Around Welcome. the Real. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice having you, man. Um, Emery, how, how do you say your last name? It's Pabla P A B L A. Okay, Emery. It's, it's actually like it's spelled. Like it's spelled, Pabla. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, you're a filmmaker, is that right? Yep. Oh my man, congratulations. We are too. <laughs> congratulations, you're as crazy as we are. Yeah, <laughs> it's hardcore stuff, man. Yeah. How long? How long you been making movies, my friend? Uh, since I started at the Art Institute back in 2010. 2010. Wow. Okay. Awesome. So he's been doing it for a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. So the Art Institute of Seattle. Is that right? Yep. All right. Good for you. Nice. So you know, I'm never. I, we didn't go to film school. We don't know no, shit. We we didn't. Nope. We don't know all those things. No, well, you can't say we don't know shit. We had to learn everything on our own. But we, just, we know. Oh, yeah, shit. Trust true. me, we know shit. That's true. Well, yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. We learned a lot of what not to do. That's correct. And we, what we learned, <laughs> and he, but he went to a, a course, like courses with professors, and learned some shit. Tell like, us what that was like. I want to know what that was like. I do too. Uh, it was. And going at the Art Institute, it was kind of like them teaching you everything. I would say from the basics of. And meaning of like cinematography, how to set up lighting as a grip or uh, producer and stuff like that. So that way, when you go out there, you're, you have everything rather than not just focusing on one particular uh, subject that you wanted to uh, go for once you graduate. So you're well So when you apply for a, so when you apply for a job, uh, you can say like, oh, I can do editing. I can do this and stuff, not just one thing. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I can set up your lights. Jack of all trades, though, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, you learn a little bit of everything and get it get it going. Um, what's the courses yeah. like going into a school like that? Like, is it a full semester? Is it a year? Is it a two-year program? What is it like? I don't know anything about it. Uh, at the Art Institute, it was by the quarter. So it'd be, uh, when I started in January, it'd be until, I think, until end of March. And then uh, end of March or end of April. And then you would start. The next will be like somewhere in June, the summer courses, which is until September. And then you start uh, fall, uh, which is from September till the end of December. Okay. okay. Oh, so there's actually big breaks in the between the semesters. Yeah. Like, like, you know, those um, art between, people need a break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> between like uh, when you uh, get off from uh, December, you will have two weeks and then you will start again in January. But gotcha. now, like, I'm actually going at uh, the. Uh, Academy of Arts University, which is in San Francisco, they do it by semesters, and uh, it's. I'm going to start next week on Monday, so uh, it'll be going from Monday till the end of May, would be oh, for wow. the Memorial Day weekend. 
Oh, okay. Cool. cool, cool. Nice. Gotcha. So do they break it up, though, in, like, different classes? Like, you know, first period you go to, you know, you go to cinematography. Second period you go to, you know, uh, gaffer school. And yeah. Do, do they do I that? Mean, like, at the Academy of Parks, it was kind of like that. Like, you ha- I had to take three to four classes. And uh, uh, actually, I had to take three classes, and they were once every week. And I had to sit there for four to six hours in each class because they would – cram the whole weekly classes into one day uh-huh. so you don't have to go to every day monday to friday for one hour each did you so like that I better to... oh to the game did you like that better then i did yes yeah. but it was kind of but i had to wake up in the difficult part was like i had to wake up way early uh-huh. i had to wake up five o'clock in the morning oh, cast wow. the light rail be there before my nine o'clock cl- uh actually uh my i can't remember uh there used to be a 12 o'clock class 12 30 class there used to be a five five o'clock class and then there was the earliest as uh was i think uh nine o'clock class so i had to be there before nine o'clock if i'm gonna if i'm taking a nine o'clock class i'd have failed yeah she, 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 i would have failed she wouldn't, she wouldn't have I'm five, get up at 5 a.m yeah, that would. I mean, we, yeah, no, I, yeah, the only person there that would show up would be Chuck. He'd be there on time. I'd but be, I don't know if you would pass though. I'd be bro. cleaning the whiteboard. I don't know if you pass though. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of knowledge. I mean, I could take all the knowledge, like all that four or five hours worth of knowledge coming at me. I'd suck that up like a fucking sponge. Not you know, a, not, not a problem. Morning, it's just I'd have to get there. You know, by nine, <laughs> ten, fifteen, twenty. I'm good by then. You know what I mean? Just, the problem is sometimes you get the best knowledge in that first ten minutes that you kept missing. No, they're doing roll call. They're like Bueller. I know. Bueller. That's what they're doing. No <laughs> yeah. one's there. No one important is there yet. <laughs> no one important is. See, Except that's me. what I'm saying. Like, I get you. I get you. That's too fucking early. Um, so how you said you graduated. Did you graduate from the school? Yeah, I got my bachelor's in, in September of 2012. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, congratulations with that, man. man. That's Thank you. That's, a, yeah. that's an accomplishment. Good so luck what, on your... On your uh, so are you moving then to go to school or are you just going... To... No, uh, I'm actually, I've been uh, with the Academy of Arts, I've been doing it online. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be graduating uh, this December. So I'm actually taking a summer break because uh, I have to figure out exactly what my thesis process should be on mm. so I can graduate uh, uh, the, in December. Yeah. So I've been having an issue with it because English is my third language. It's so like all the instructors are like, Hollywood type producers and okay. so whenever I'm giving them a story and they're like nope you, you're not at that level you need to rework on it the story doesn't make sense the character doesn't relate to one another where's the 3x structure and I'm like okay I'm trying to figure this out like, <laughs> how to make the story better and then every every throughout the each week I've been trying to do as better as possible by the time when the classes are over there's like you're doing good you're doing good but you've got a long way to go I'm like <laughs> That's oh, a well, so do you think that's a language barrier thing you know somewhat i I, bel- I believe so because yeah. when i when i look at uh it's like it's like me it's like me trying to go to steven spielberg and asking him this is the idea i have but he's at that level where it's like yeah you know this story's not gonna work out because you're like down here or i'm way up here <laughs> and i think uh, by looking at the story I, I don't think it's gonna be like a jurassic park type of story <laughs> where you're kind of like doing it like a on a fifty dollar budget movie kind of for, uh, from my perspective <laughs> like okay that's funny man that is so you said this english was your third language did i hear you right yes you see what i'm saying now you know what you should never feel bad at all if someone goes yeah i can't understand what you're saying because your english isn't that great i don't think that's fair because motherfucker knows three languages well, i know one barely well, and you know what? You know He's, what I'm saying? Actually, there is no none of that that I've noticed. I you speak English very well. Yeah, I totally understand. I everything you I say. understand everything you say. Yeah, I understand you better than do women. I mean, you have you have a <laughs> shut up, Aaron. You have a strong accent, well, but you you're very clear. Yeah, absolutely. I I come uh, my uh, I'm born in a family. I uh, other than cousins, like I'm the oldest one in the family. So I'm uh, I grew up with two brothers. At at first, it was just one brother. My youngest brother was born 13 years later. So I had to oh, wow. understand the meaning of becoming like a father, father to him as well, because I would 
taken to, I would go with them to parents' conference because my parents didn't know English. My dad would always be working. And he was like, I don't have time. So I have to go to parents' conference with him and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I had to explain it to my parents, like, this is what he's doing. This is what he's doing. And so everybody, every time when I take him, uh, go to school with him, and they always think that I'm his father <laughs> because they they look at me as a sure. mature person. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I... So is your youngest brother 13 years younger than you or 13 young, years younger Thir than your youngest 13 brother? Years, uh, 13 years younger than me. So okay. he's... Uh, He's going to turn 21 in September. So he wow. goes by the year because he was born in 2000. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, same as Raya. Yeah, when I walk around with Chuck, they think uh, he's my dad too. Every they think I'm everybody's dad. Really? Yeah. yeah, they thought that Sage and Amber were both my daughters when I went to the store the other day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sucks to be mm -hmm. you guys. They oh. think me and my daughters are sisters. Um, I, lo oh. I look old, even though I'm really old. Yeah, you're, you're old. But they same. don't really think that. They just kiss on my butt. No, I think they do. I think they believe it. You look just like your, your daughters. It's weird. It's weird. You're lucky. Thank you. You are. Yeah, See, I, that's I've, a compliment. Aaron, Emery, you, you remember that shit. Like Aaron, when you got in a fight with your woman today, you go down and tell her, you look good today. It'll, it'll work. It'll work. Yeah, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, you look like one of your daughters, too. I do. We do that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I had a question now, and I can't remember. I'm so I sorry. No, it's oh, fine. you made I, him I forget his one. question? Well, oh, oh, no, no. It's just, it was something about his school still, because I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with, oh, with, with school, because... You know, when you were when you were younger and you were deciding to get into filmmaking, you you decided to go and get taught this thing. What what made you want to go to school in the first place? What about film attracted you? Well, well for one thing, it's like I come from a family where uh, I come from, uh, from a Sikh religion culture, and where it's it's always because uh, none nobody from my family actually got a degree, so I was going to be the first one. Uh, graduated from high school and no joke and then my my middle brother he was the first one to get a degree before i did but uh, uh then i was the one actually who graduated because i was starting at a highline at first before i transferred to in the art institute because at the time and the art institute was only offering a associate's degree for video production okay and they weren't offering bachelor's degree and the only way for, way for me to go was either go to Florida, uh, UCLA, which was going to be hard to get in. Mm -hmm. And then either uh, uh, New York, I think I remember the, the college in uh, NYLA or something like that. It was called the uh, film school up there. I think that's where one of the major directors actually went there. I think Steven Spielberg or somebody. Okay. Uh, but there's one up I there I had, went to. Yeah, I didn't have anybody. My dad kept telling me, it's like, there's nobody you can live with over there. So how are you going to stay there and stuff like that? So I had to go to uh, Highline Community College trying to figure out exactly, it, get my writing degree, I would say, like, especially sure. in uh, English uh, for uh, as an author, because that's what was my second passion was. Uh, because when I first came here in 96, uh, I got more hooked into storytelling when i started reading books and stuff and captain um, uh, captain underpants was like one of those <laughs> yes. kind of intriguing kind of understanding stories like okay now i can visualize me and trying to come up with a stupid idea of a principal and, and his underwear and stuff and then uh, i got hooked into more like then uh, all of a sudden like this idea popped into my head uh, and it was all thanks to star wars as well I started coming out with this idea at the time it was so like so so many places and I had to kind of help myself cram it down and even to this day I'm still working on the idea uh, because it's a huge universe that I'm trying to create here mm -hmm. okay. and uh, it's it's based on an anti-superhero and that is actually created by uh, God himself but is it's put pure evil in himself by the devil himself so he's trying to kind of uh, i had to come out with it. it was like he's like, uh he's you know torn up place where he's like he's good and bad everybody hates him because he's and uh, there's a darkness in him and then at the same time he's trying to fit, fit in too but when every time he gets rejected by humans uh it kind of draws him out to going towards the bad side so I started coming, I was like, what kind of story I can create out of it where uh, it's like 
is too powerful uh, to be even controlled by heaven and hell. Okay. So everybody wants a piece of him and they want his power because now good and evil is put inside of him that he has become a, like a, a weapon of mass destruction that can just blow up a planet just with the uh, snap of fingers. Holy shit. And uh, so... Hi. Sounds like Aaron so Carlson. Have, to, have you met Aaron Carlson? Almost. Have you, you know, watched The yeah. Outrider, though? I mean, you're talking my <laughs> language, brother. When I wrote that, that screenplay, that's what I was doing. I was thinking in the same same genre of where you're talking. Okay. Super fun. And, and, uh, yeah, so that's how I kind of came into it. was like I wanted to quit this story when I started like getting into the reading books. And in elementary, I used to read so many books. I could like, go take a test and uh, I will go to the next book and read it. And then I will picture every chapter in my head as visuals. So it's like, oh, I can picture this in my head. Then I got more hooked into it that I wanted to go into film school and stuff. Makes but then uh, Art Institute was an offering bachelor's degree. So I had to go into like as an author for a associate's degree in English at Highland Community College before then they started accepting a uh, bachelor's degree. That's when I transferred in 2010 to start there. Okay. Nice. okay. I see. So you hustled it. You figured out a way to get in and get, get the education you needed, man. Good for you. That's badass. Yeah. Um, and you learned a lot, probably in the writing as well. In the writing, yes. Uh, I, I had some instructors because uh, sometimes they will tell me, it's like, this is not how in reality it kind of works. So I would always kind of like, because uh, I never got into like the whole american culture kind of thing of it like you know funerals or so stuff like that and then they always tell me like in american culture we didn't do like that and oh. Like, oh okay and then i was like all right then let me rewrite that uh, yeah, that's and like then, learning wow mm-hmm. that's that's interesting that's a lot to to get through actually yeah, like it, i can't imagine having to like or going to a different place and then having to learn the, the culture. whole culture is different and yeah that's crazy yeah that's a lot yeah. that's a lot well good for you Dude, I could do it though. I could do that shit. Up, no, because he's 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 gangster. He got shit done. I could. What the fuck is that? Was that your phone? Yeah. What are you doing, dude? Sorry. What I are you a I noob? Swore I killed it. He's such a noob. I'm so sorry, Oh, yeah. His phone's going he off. He didn't like... even hear it. Probably. Well, Freaking noob. Uh, I actually, when you guys were talking, I couldn't even hear. I know it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. You didn't miss anything. Uh, yeah. You didn't miss anything. So, uh, when you got to film school, then after your the two years you did writing. So tell me about like what I'm, I'm like, I'm fascinated by it. Like I said before, like, I think like when you get an assignment at film school, do they go tell you to, okay, you need to, we want you to do this assignment. You got to go film a tree, you know, and then you got to do something with the tree to make the dog come up to it and go pee. We and remember, then and you film it, right? We remember life is the, we watched his life. That was. was oh, that's that, right. And that was for graduation, right? Or what was life? That was for what? Oh, that was that was for my graduation piece for the at the art institute. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We okay. had to. Uh, it, it was based on my uh, uh, short story that I wrote for my writing class back when I was taking my AE degree in English. Oh, okay. And uh, I I was like, oh, uh, I want to adapt this and stuff because uh, the ideas that I wanted to do uh, for my class for my graduation, they said like it was not gonna work. You're gonna need a lot of work, and my instructors got changed because one of my instructors that I really respect him. And I was kind of weird that he actually left before because he got upset with school because uh, they weren't taking care of military in, in, uh, veterans okay. in, oh. in school properly. And he got really upset and left the school unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had uh, somebody else take over for him for the remaining of the quarter. And then the next quarter uh, what, uh, was was going to be my production. And then I had to redo everything uh, because uh, the script got kind of got scrapped and stuff. And then in production, I had to quickly write my script and go into production. And then I had an issue with finding the actors. So one of the actors wow. that I hired, he helped me find uh, two, three actors for me. And then we went uh, from there uh, doing it because I was... Uh, I was doing it through my camera, but then I had a, uh, a cinematographer who was helping me out and then a few of my friends doing it. And then we had, were able to use some of the locations uh, and based on uh, either my sound and my sound recorders was giving me a location to shoot or my 
uh, academic advisor was giving me his office to use on uh, the very first thing that was in the when the movie starts. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha, cool. So you have friends that help you out. Do you are your brother uh, are your brothers in any of your movies or do they help you out? Uh, I when we were doing the live, I actually had my brother. And it was kind of like a behind the scenes. Uh, I had him as a stand in t- uh, towards the end of the scene where one of the when one of the character gets shot. So I wanted him to uh, be in there where pretend like he's getting shot and he's lying on the ground and stuff to to figure to out whether the frame was perfectly right and stuff. Oh. But other than that, I didn't shoot him or anything like that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. But there was uh, another short that I was doing in the summer. Uh, I had to, I used my brother uh, as a because he was a uh, young at the time, so I wanted to do <laughs> kind of like a short uh, film where what would be like if the whole situation was put on me if my uh, parents passed away and I had to take care of my little brother alone, and oh. then uh, my instructor was like, "Amrik, next time hire actual professional actors. Mm-hmm. Don't put your friends in it." I was like, okay. <laughs> hey, actually, going back to life, who was the female officer that you had in that movie? Do you remember her name? Uh, her name is uh, I, uh, I, Ivory Brownman, I think uh, her last name was. I think she moved to, I think she might have moved to France or somewhere in the East Coast. Okay. She's now an ad, uh, advocate. Uh, she does, uh, like, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, protest uh, she helps out with the protest and stuff okay. like that okay gotcha yeah an advocate thing yep, yeah got it nice man nice that's fun why did you why did you ask she Douglas? looks very similar to one of the actresses that we are looking to work with so i was like oh. wow because I, I know that movie was seven years ago so i was like wow is that her younger is right. she look oh. that much different it's like or am i just crazy or They're probably crazy probably because i'm trying to watch crazy. it on my phone yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's good though um that's exciting stuff, man. So you've, you've been able to learn quite a bit of the filmmaking stuff, and you're getting your feet wet and getting out there and making stuff. So uh, yeah, how and, are you uh, getting that done crew- by yourself now? Do you have it? Like I think Sam was saying, do you have a team of people that are helping you? That you, your own crew? Uh, I I actually do everything by myself. Uh, wow. I have actors that I, I always ask out to see whether they're available to do it. And I use them over and over again, yeah, and right depending now, yeah. on the availability. And then they actually help me out on set whenever I need, like, to set up the lights and stuff. So other than that, because almost everyone that are now at a professional level who are doing commercials, they expect uh, to pay like like above three hundred dollars a day uh, to do work and stuff. Wow. So mm-hmm. like, because I'm. Uh, I'm paying all my rent and it kind of goes zero yeah. every month. So I, there's no way I can pay right. anybody. So I try to help out in whatever way. And then I just pay the actors uh, for the gas or whatsoever. Like we did one in December, which I told Chuck about. I can't show it until the premiere on Wednesday. No good. Uh, oh, okay. We uh, we shot it up in uh, Port Townsend. I had to book a room, uh, a house and paid three four hundred dollars for three days and then uh, i had to buy and get a hotel for three four actors only two of them uh, used it for and that rounded up to like a thousand dollars right there yeah. for three days shoot and stuff and everybody traveled there and stayed the night and stuff and we shot everything as much as we could and i had to come back to help my wife with something on the same night we were shooting so i had one of my actors take over duties for the as a director, co-director, mm-hmm. uh, and while I was uh, coming back to take on my wife, then travel back two hours and going there oh to uh, be back in production. Wow! Because you love making movies. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Good for you. Man. And then this and this project that I'm doing is it's more like now uh, another short independent per, uh, that I want to do, and uh, because I started coming up with this idea back in 2011 when I was at the Art Institute. And mm-hmm. it was based on a uh, little bit from the movie. I don't know if you guys remember it. Uh, Sylvester Sloan's uh, Assassin that was shot oh, back yeah. here in 96 yeah. uh, in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And, and it was based Sloan, on Antonio that. Banderas, never too. heard of it. No, never heard of it. No, great movie. <laughs> Love the movie. <laughs> and uh, so I started thinking, was like, what if our government... Uh, has been lying to us since day one, ever since JFK got assassinated. And there's a whole conspiracy going on that maybe it's not 
maybe JFK wasn't assassinated uh, uh, by some white guy who just had to be arrested for some reason. Mm-hmm. What if somebody else was involved uh, higher up to make him do it? So that way, then he gets the blame. Then I started thinking, it was like, what if CIA and the actual government was involved in um, killing him and, and uh, Martin Luther King? And then that could cause uh, a secret government to be created trying to uncover the secrets behind what the government was trying to hide. I'm with you. I, I Aaron wrote, loves conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah, because yeah. the last script I wrote, uh, it's kind of a conspiracy theory thing. And I actually started it prior to COVID. And the weird thing oh, is, yeah, it, it kind of goes right with it. And I was like, holy shit. If that movie was – if we were shot blackout now, it would it'd be a monster smash. It would if be. If we would have shot block, blackout – in 2019, yeah, at least the last year. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been weird timing. But I, I love the conspiracy thing, too. There's so many avenues and so many fun ways to go about tying in history and these these uh, events and then speculation and theory. You can you can come up with some really cool imaginative stories. So good for you, man. See, you're my man. Yeah. You like genres like I do. See, he likes cool genres, Chuck. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, but, you, you know, we're doing a faith-based movie right now. Wait a now. minute. Wait a minute. I love horror <laughs> Thriller, suspense, yeah. action, comedy. I just happen to write a faith-based film. Yeah. Yeah, he what just about like, westerns? I love westerns. Silverado is still one of my favorite westerns of all time. Do you time. like westerns, Emery? I, 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 I started getting into westerns. Uh, I would have to say the remake of True Grit was really great uh, on mm-hmm. getting into the western films. And uh, I would say like No Country for Old Men. I know Badass. it's kind of like more of a thriller, but I feel like that's more of a southwestern i would say yeah it's it's uh, yeah it, you know, i'm with you because it takes place in the 1980s so yeah. it feels more like the it feels like the old times yeah great villain though one <laughs> yeah. of the best movie villains ever he is a dope bad motherfucker it kind of reminds me of me a little bit <laughs> a little bit uh, anything oh, wow. anything he likes anything Ooh. that's bad anything that's wonderful no, anything no, no, that's, no, no. Oh, it's, uh, it's no i like talk that. about myself negatively all the time like last week i was like i walk around with a purse you know and <laughs> my wallet and stuff <laughs> You, you know what I mean? Wallet. You know, I'm saying it's just little things. No, my definition of wallet. Oh, right. Yeah. And his definition of wallet, not the actual definition of wallet. No, my wallet. De- definition of wallet. It's got a is... lot of flaps. Mine has a lot of flaps and stuff. <laughs> my wallet. Yours has a lot of nothing in it. Yeah, but I can stuff a lot in there if I wanted it yeah. in there. Ooh, if you had it. It's roomy. In there. <laughs> it's a roomy wallet. Yeah, it's got a lot of room. So. And we, we play games on here, so we'll get to that later. But <laughs> yeah, that's what, they're talking in code from the game because we do a, a game called the Urban Dictionary Game. And so he's talking in code from what was in our last episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you oh, want to do you oh, want to play that game? He does want to play. Well, that game. it would be. I, I, I can give it a try. Well, you'd have to be. It would be a whole other language. So you. <laughs> it's you'd a whole other language. You'll know English. four. You'll know, you'll know four languages after this. <laughs> you or, you'll, or you'll be like me and just butcher them all. <laughs> we got this. All right, let's play a game. You want to play a game? Oh, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Urban Dictionary. Oh, the Urban Dictionary. Dictionary game. So you know how to play this? Yo, mama, you want to play the Urban Dictionary game? I give you. I've never played. Yeah, I just give you something, uh, a word or a phrase, and you try to guess what it means. That's it. And it never okay. means okay. what you think it means. It yeah. never means what you think it means. Right. For example, if you said fire hydrant, it's not a fire hydrant. Right. It means something else in the Urban Dictionary. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, got it. Urban Dictionary okay. is like all the street slang type sayings mm-hmm. in, in our wonderful, beautiful American culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Basically, you, the way our kids talk and your little brother maybe <laughs> talks like this. So, yeah. <laughs> and if it, if so like in Urban Dictionary, I've said Cobra Kai. It would under, the real definition would be Aaron Carlson. Uh, nope, not at all. But. Kind of. <laughs> right? No? Okay. No. Some, I, but you get that. You'll idea. identify more with this one, Aaron. Okay, here we go. Pork Scotch Shades. Pork Scotch Shades. Pork Scotch Shades? Pork Scotch Shades. Those three words in what that are, order. What are Pork Scotch Shades? What the fuck is that? <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. Uh, I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to say the, this too. But guess first. Uh, the, the only thing I could come out with pork is the full pork we eat, or uh, scotch would be the alcohol. Uh, and what was the last one? Shades. Shades. Oh, Shades. Shades, like S H A D E S. Like shadow or something like that, like, or like, well, like um, uh, yeah. a tree shadow or something. Yeah. So okay. you can get out of the sun. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That works. That does work. <laughs> that's that's totally how bad this one is. This one's This one's great. Aaron, Aaron, give it a shot. Um, Scotch shades. What are they? 
pork. Scotch. Scotch shades. shades. <laughs> I mean, really? Is this the hardest one you've ever this had? This is the dumbest one. No, it's ever... not. It's not. I know the okay, answer. Okay, so How it's, you know it, it's going to be um, a drunk pig that happened to find some sunglasses when it was at the barn. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, that's all I got. Okay. okay. <laughs> got nothing else. Say it for me again, Sam. Pork oh. scotch shades. Okay, you guys are overthinking this. It's pork scotch shades. So when you get pulled over by a pig early in the morning and he comes up, and you roll down your window, and he's breathing that heavy, nasty, alcoholic breath steaming up his sunglasses. <laughs> that's pork scotch oh. shades. Okay. Oh, fair enough. That's, um, that's closest. That's the closest well, one. What's the answer to this one? <laughs> pork scotch shades are sunglasses worn by old men who want people to think that they're cool and trendy. Oh, this one is Aaron Carlson. I know. That's what I said. Oh, I thought I was Cobra Kai. I'm sorry. Now that I'm corrected, I know what I am now. Your pork scotch shades. For fuck's sakes. All right. Give me another one. Let's get a good one. um, Can you change his name to pork scotch shades? (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'll give you another one. Don't don't do me wrong here, guys. Okay. Okay, You movie guys. Movie guys. Movie guys. You've all seen lots of movies, right? Oh, yeah. We all here. We're all filmmakers here. We got this. You gentlemen, don't, don't give me... Don't, don't shame me right now. And we won't if you don't give us another pork What are yarbles? What? Yarbles. Yarbles. It's from a movie. Come on. Yarbles. What are they? You know what yarbles are? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Did you say yarbles? Yarbles. Y A R B L E S. Yarbles. Yarbles. Hmm. It's from a movie. You want me to ta- give you a hint and hey, tell you what movie? Sh- no. Okay. Not until we, not until we, if we completely bomb it, then you can give us a hint. Okay. You're first, my friend. Oh, he's thinking hardcore. Oh, yeah, yeah he's he thinking. He wants a win over Nick Sherry. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> oh. Wait. Okay, who did that? I mean, it's like coming in my head, but then it just lends sleep. You, you want Aaron away, to go first? Kind of... Oh, I get to go first? <laughs> Why do I get? Because he I can't go. think of when I got to go first now. Shit. <laughs> All right, uh, Yarbles. Yar- what are Yarbles? She's saying it's a movie thing. I have yeah. nothing. I'm, I don't it's remember. From a movie. Yeah, not nothing I've seen. I, 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 I have movies. a feeling a character says that or something in the movie. Yarbles. Do you have I, a guess, oh. Amrick? Do you have a guess? I I, I can't picture it in my head, but I remember there a character says uh, 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 that word itself. Oh, I think, okay. In my head, I just can't remember it. It's okay. It, it, is that animated movie? <laughs> No. She might not know that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yarbles. Come on, Yarbles. Do you okay. Gu- okay, do you guys want a hint or no? I, I think I, I, no, no, no hint. No, I said no hint to evolve. Yeah. Oh, because you know? I might. Okay. I, I, I just think it's how a Mexican guy says marbles down south. Okay. That Jay is silent. Yar- okay. y- yarbles. So in the move in the moving age of league, the guy looks at me and says, You have no Yarbles. Balls. And he goes, Yarbles? Wavels? And that was it. Wavels is balls for yeah, Spanish. Yeah, that. that's not so what you're he about, said though. yarbles because it was a, a Chinese guy who said it to Serrano. Oh, fair he enough. Said, okay, no yeah, yarbles, yeah, yeah. wavels. He said you had no balls. So he thinks it's from Major League. Is oh close? well. No. <laughs> Where are we at? It's you're totally right, but it, that's the wrong movie. That oh I... shit! Oh yeah, Chuck got it right. <laughs> yeah, I got it oh. right, but the wrong movie. That's yeah. good. Good for you. See, you got one right. Isn't that great? He didn't even go to film school or nothing. Great job, Chuck. <laughs> okay, so it's from A Clockwork Orange. <laughs> oh, for fuck. Oh, okay. God. And you know what? Yeah, they might have been. They might have been making fun of that in Major League. Yeah. Yep. They probably and you know were. what's funny yeah. too? Everybody that listens to the show that loves. Testicles? That movie, oh, yeah. that movie, a clock and, Cu- and Kubrick, yeah. they're gonna think we're all fucking stupid now, because oh. none of us could remember that. Thanks, oh, Sam. Now yeah. we really look I, like I, we I know can, what we're talking about. I can definitely tell you, one of my friends is gonna think I'm stupid because <laughs> <laughs> because he, he will talk about Stanley Kubrick a lot, and he's I know. Really yeah. talk, tell me about Clockwork Orange oh, and then what I'm was it, sorry, uh, Full Metal Jacket? It's okay, it's fine. No, it's fine because we're stupid anyway. It's no, fine. yeah, you are. <laughs> No. <laughs> you know, it took me what five to ten years before I watched Scarface. Why everybody kept talking about it in middle school, uh-huh. and I was like, "What the hell is Scarface?" And everybody keeps talking about it. I was like, then I had to watch it. I was like, "Oh, I love you, Al Pacino." Right, right. That's my man. See, I'm right with you. Yes. That's still one of my top movies. My man. That actually is a great movie. It's my favorite fucking movie to this day. I still I, every time I watch it, I can't help but just love Tony Montana. I just the character alone. 
It is. It it's is, great. It is a cinematic yeah. toy because if you're in a good mood, it makes you laugh. If you're in a sad mood, you feel all the drama that he's going through and all the and all the. It just really pulls it out. Yep. I mean, that's just one of those. And when you just want to sit back and enjoy all the carnage, it's fun. Oh yeah. And yeah, and it was a cool thing because I had to. Uh, I went to watch it uh, on a re re release on in its 35th anniversary in theaters. And I was like, oh, man, I get to watch it on the big screen. It's badass, right? Let's hear your best uh, Scarface quote. Let's hear it. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yes. yeah, good job. <laughs> you know, that was pretty good, man. He did a good job with that one, you know. How about you, Chuck? What I, you got over there? I don't even do it, man. I'm like the, I'm like the dopey uh, his What dopey are you like, buddy. Manny? You can't do shit? <laughs> <laughs> I told him what you told me to talk. I told him I was in sanitation. You do something with your life, Chuck, you know. <laughs> you do something. You know, be a nurse. These Work guys. with blind kids, lepers, shit like that. <laughs> Stop waiting around for Amber to fuck you, I'll tell you that. Get something oh, what? Am, this is one of Aaron's know, uh, favorite things to do. Did you know there was a, a, a remake before that one? Yeah, a black and white one, right? Yeah, yep. I, I actually watched that one before noticing about it because I was taking a class uh, on uh, like greatest hits and stuff, uh, yeah. on the, uh, which we had to uh, review about. And uh, the original one, I had to watch it, and it was more of a comedy because the director himself was a comedy director mm -hmm. and he was, it was his first time tackling as a crime kind of film and stuff. And then I could tell it from the way the movie was done, that there was kind of like a comedy feel to it. Yeah. Even though the, he was trying to make a serious type of film, okay. the, yeah. the character Tony itself, was like always kind of laughing, like, oh, let's just, why don't we just kill these kind of people, man? That's They're how he was. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, now the way he's talking, I can tell he's trying to be like, it's uh, uh, kind of like a com uh, comedian character in a situation. It was like, why would you be wanting me laughing? But then I thought the thing is like, he wanted the character to do kind of that kind of situation. It's like, right. you know, why would you want to have almost every kind of character, the main character, be in a tough situation, but just be miserable? I'm just gonna go <laughs> kill some people. That's it. But I think from his perspective, it was like, let's just make one uh, this character. Uh, think of it like uh, it's more of a happy situation uh -huh. uh, that he's gonna come out of it uh, winning regardless and then towards the end he just like gets shot yeah like, oh, cool. yeah drug, it's a, it's drug a dealers, trip to watch drug dealers are like uh, filmmakers we're all a little delirious a little bit sometimes are yeah. you saying you <laughs> or said delusional. We, delusional are you a drug dealer yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Whatever his C diff stuff is, he's <laughs> he's got a monopoly on that it's corner of the market now for that medication. He doesn't fuck around. Okay. Are you dealing C diff meds, Chuck? No, they're so expensive. I just, I just <laughs> used them all. <laughs> Those meds were so expensive. I just gobbled them up. Well, that's okay. You need at them, the uh, the prescription rate that you, I was advised absolutely. to by the yes professionals. Yeah, yeah. we're on we're on live, so yeah, professionals. I got we're it. we're we're live in front of a studio canned audience. We are, we are. So. um Emery, you do you do anything more than the film stuff? Because I was I was checking out your Facebook profile and whatnot. Do you do like videography work as well on the side? Do you kind of hustle that? Uh, like in you know making like, don't you do like, like weddings, and commercials, weddings, things anything like, like that? that? Yeah, I actually work for a company up in Illinois, and they they send me like video work and stuff for weddings. I only had one wedding that I did last year because of the COVID and stuff. Right. Yeah, all of the weddings got canceled. Yeah. And then there's another company that I work, which I, uh, which is like they charge their clients four hours of video work and stuff. So uh, there's one coming up in June and one is in August. That hopefully we'll have to see whether if it gets canceled because I was supposed to do one last year for that company too. She canceled it and then turns out that she ended up going to Idaho to do the wedding because in Idaho you can have more than 50 yeah. people together to do the wedding. Oh, mm -hmm. you can? Yeah, you can certain states. You can. Oh, wow. Depends on what state you're in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you go to that part of Idaho that's really skinny, the you, skinny can, you can fit a whole bunch of people in there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I was curious about that because I didn't know if you were like, what your goals are with your, your skills that you've gotten over these years with your schooling, with your education. Well, from my perspective, it's like everybody uh, – because from I, I try to see whether I could uh, work for like commercial departments, but they uh, every commercial companies uh, production company especially they only want to keep like minimum of five to six people when they specialize in, in each thing that they do, and they won't hire anybody else. And then 
Microsoft and you know Nintendo, they have those companies that they they want to just work with them only because they've been working with them for the past 10, 15 years or whatsoever.、Mm-hmm. And there's like I'm I'm always kind of come to a situation of finding a job, and I've been、uh, since I graduated, I applied to over 150 jobs, and they all got rejected because I'm not meeting the criteria that they want. They want me to do something that is like. You're at a ten-year level kind of job that is at a senior position、yeah. uh, job, and I'm like, how can I do that? Even though I got out of school,、uh, and then you expect me to have experience that you know、uh, that I have to be at a fifty-year level kind of experience. Right. It's it, it just like I don't know how to how to react to that, and they, they just quickly reject me and say like, oh, we'll keep your resume on our file. It's like. You're not gonna contact me for another ten, fifteen, or maybe even, uh, at all. You know what's funny, Emrick? There's a lot of、uh, filmmaking stories I've heard and and followed. A lot of indie guys that have a production background before they started making、mm-hmm. their indie films. And you know what they did? They lied.、Oh. <laughs> they lied. It's true. They lied to get the jobs as an intern. Or going in and getting、uh, some freelance work, they would lie about their experience all the time just to get the job. But they believed in their work that much that they knew the final product would be what was important. They actually did that shit. Now, see, someone normal would go in with their, you know, honesty. Honest about <laughs> God forbid you're honest about you went to school and you learned something and you want an opportunity because yeah, it's all experience matters, right? Well, yeah, that's what they did, Emrick. Isn't、yeah. that crazy? They really just they just、yeah. lied about their experience, brother, and they got the jobs. The only、uh, the only weakest point that、uh, I had in at the at the art institute was motion graphics. That was the only weakest stuff I had、uh, that I had to deal with because even when I was learning what to do, I would do one thing and I did it, but then I would totally forget how I got to that point. Mm-hmm. My instructor was teaching me like motion graphics, so we actually had to create a, like a flash video. And then have it work on a website. Okay. And I got that working, and then in the next quarter, I totally forgot about it, and I was trying to remember. And he was like, "Amrik, you did the last quarter." I was like, "I know, but I totally forgot about it." Right. It's、yeah. like some and those kind of stuff, like just like, will come here and then just get out quickly. But the <laughs> other part, important parts, will just stick in my head. It's like、yeah. I know how to do this and stuff. Completely normal. Completely yeah. normal. Yeah. We've we've. Oh, go ahead,、like、guys.、That. Yeah. Go ahead, Chuck. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, there's 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 plenty of concepts of things that you you know, you know, you know, you know, and it's in front of you, and you forgot, and then you keep going, and you turn back, and you're like, we forgot to do that. <laughs> no shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny he mentioned that too, because every time you know we've had years that have gone through and gone by before we've done like a project, right? And we're doing better at it now, but literally there was times where I I knew how to edit, I knew how to use Sony Vegas at the time or Adobe Premiere or just start getting to DaVinci now, but you know, or After Effects, whatever product or I was using for software,、um, I was great in it. You know, I could figure it out and get it done. And then we take a break, and then I get back in there and be like, how do I composite? How do I? <laughs> I had no idea where my tools were. I had no idea what I used to do, especially in After Effects. If you don't use that motherfucker on a consistent <laughs> basis, you will forget, and you got to actually go back, watch tutorials again, and be like, "Oh yeah, I forgot. There it is. There it is. There's." And you start. Then it all comes back, but you can lose. And he doesn't even smoke weed. No, I don't smoke weed at all. No, no, I don't need to. I'm a pretty chill guy. Plus, I'm natural. I'm, 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 I'm naturally. I'm black, though. I don't need to have any of that stuff. Did you just say you're chill? Yeah, I'm chill. You got no chill. As a screenwriter. Uh, if you are, if you do come in a writer's block, put that、uh, and put it away for a couple of weeks to a month、mm-hmm. and don't touch it. And if you something comes up as an idea for that particular script, then you bring it out and start working on it.、Yeah. So that's what I、uh, I kind of use that particular perspective of what he taught me, and、uh, and that's what I've been using, it, and especially for the project that I did、uh, in December. About the conspiracy, I already have season one written out, and、nice. but I'm gonna extend it a little bit more of each episode because they're nine to twelve pages each episode, and they're six episodes for season one. And uh, and I, I I would what I would do is like I would、uh, write it and then I would put it away, and then I would when something comes up in my head, I just come come back and figure 
write it on a paper and then I was like, okay, this scene is going to go right here and stuff. So I ended up uh, having six episodes written out for season one and it comes to a point where it's like, oh, now this is now I kind of understand what I was trying to do here. Now each, uh, the first season is going to be introducing those uh, characters and how they're relating to one another that will uh, go on to season two as they're going to the most dangerous task and the mission of trying to figure out what uh, the government conspiracy shit is going on. And then one of their own guys is actually undercover in the conspiracy. uh, So that way his cover doesn't get blown. That's cool. It sounds like you've given this story a lot of thought. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're ready for it. You are all into this too. You got it all figured out. So do you, I do. And uh, all I have to do is just make it a half hour and then see if I can do like a pilot episode and with the funding and stuff. And then, hopefully use that for pitching to netflix or uh, hulu uh, i know with hulu i was told that i needed to get an entertainment attorney uh, before i can even talk to them right right yeah there's some tricky stuff to get on to the those kind of platforms but you could get there you know but you do have to take some steps to to get your get your films or your web series or your series even out there like that so that was my next yeah. question so is this your next project that you're hoping to work on uh right now uh I'm actually going to try to do a, like a feature film on it, like a, that will lead up to the series okay. itself because I started coming up and there was one main character that I started thinking about, like, cause he doesn't come until midway of season two. Okay. And he's one like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, he's almost like a John Wick character that okay. uh, somehow, uh, is his name Aaron? The CIA <laughs> decided to, uh, find, uh, find out that he's hiding, uh, in, in this, house in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden all of the fbi agents gets killed and because he knew they were coming and he used his tactical uh, that he learned from the military to kill them one by one and it was in the middle of the night so he relied on his eyesight to see in the dark to hunt them down and they used goggles to see through and they didn't even know that he came to them one by one and uh, he doesn't like weapons, and he j- he used his hammer or machete to you know, kind of get rid of him. And then he wants to figure out exactly why was some uh, government come after him to kill him. So I wanted to do like a backstory because okay. his uh, his character's story revolves around the family that actually started the the agency that wants to figure out uh, what the government was trying to hide. And then I wanted to tell the story of like why did he left that uh, f- uh, why did he left the family in the first place and then disappeared and uh, and then the movie was supposed to be where he joined the military and then he went off the radar and then somehow his uh, sister contacts him that his brother died and that brings him back in turn, uh, that maybe thought uh, somebody he was involved in this conspiracy to kill his brother and then after finding out and having that peace uh that they found it, he goes back into hiding again. Right and then that will uh, start off the season, uh, that first episode itself. Super fun, man. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're, you're a creative guy. You like, <laughs> and you love the stories, my man. You do. Your brain's working. I can see it when you're telling me, I can hear, I can see your excitement that you have for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm happy uh, for you because that's that's what it's about, man. It's cool to to have that stuff go through your mind and your body, and then have the ability to be able to get it out there to people. Yeah, and I uh, I just did one uh, short. Now the actors are like, we want to do this uh, too as well. Uh, I, and it was for a, it's called make a film in eight hour, which was in Atlanta, and we had to wake up six o'clock and start uh, shooting right away. And the uh, funny thing was it, I was aiming for like a serious kind of look to it, but it turned out to be like a, a comedy, like a dark comedy to it. And uh, I wanted to poke, uh, I wanted to do like a, the TV show Supernatural, okay. but uh, but like poke fun of it in, in some sense where it's like, what if you had these stupid ass hunters, but they're, uh, they're well known in the hell uh, uh, world. And for some reason, they had to go through these stupid ways of killing uh, uh, spirits and stuff like that. So when when we shot that, I didn't realize it. The next day, I would win best editing, best cinematography, and best overall film for uh, out of the six awards. 
And that's I was like, awesome. oh, cool, okay. And I, I wasn't expecting it that that would turn out to be like it was done really quickly. Right, right. That's fun, man. Eight hour film festival, Jack. Jesus Christ. We did the seventy two. That was hard enough. I know seventy two is rough. So of course, we were we were younger back then. Yeah, we probably need like a week, two weeks, two week film festival, bro. We <laughs> need some time. As long as we stretch first. <laughs> yeah, I got to stretch first when I do it. Um, what's what is your plans? My friend, because you, you are obviously a storyteller. Now, I'm assuming you have a day job like a lot of us do here. And are you are you trying to push your production company to a place where you can focus on that as as a creative person and earn a living? Or are you trying to just do this for fun and see where it goes? Uh, I, I was – that's what I was thinking, like, uh, to uh, get one of my pro- uh, projects and somewhere to see where it goes. And the project that we did in December, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention what the the title is gonna be called. It's it's called Assassinators, uh, and uh, I wanted I what I was trying to figure out was like, let's say that if I do the whole season one, I wanted to see like if a big studios uh, uh, picks it up and say like, hey, we're gonna give you X amount of money. Here you go, but we want the idea. Okay. For, uh, that you did. Sure. You know, you keep all the money. Well, uh, just give us the idea. We'll do it our own ways. And then I wanted to see exactly how, uh, the, uh, I would, I wouldn't mind them taking that, uh, uh, and then see where they take the approach to it. Okay. So that way it kind of gives me, uh, more opportunity to focus on my other projects as well, uh, with that money that I'll probably get. Sure. And there was like a idea for a horror film that I, I'm thinking about maybe I should start working on it in July or something like that. Uh, 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 horror feature film and stuff. Cool. And, uh, and that I've been working on it, uh, for like three years now. And it's almost kind of like a Jason style in the modern, uh, version of him and up here in the Peter Northwest and stuff. And, uh, so I was thinking like, w- uh, I want to try to tackle that. I did. The trailer that I sent you guys probably, I don't know if you have seen in the hollow screen. Yeah, hollow uh, screen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I found a new mask that I wanted to use and I'm so developing that creative idea right now cool. to hope to start working on the project itself. And hopefully that if it turns out to be really good uh, uh, at the end, I'm going to try to see if I can get into Shutter, uh, the horror yep, uh, great app, platform. To see if it you know, goes to there because I contacted them and they said they would love to review our and the project but it has to be completed Mm -hmm. even if it's uh even if you do a tv show then i think you have to have the completed i I would say season uh uh, for them to review it yeah when you're when you're just starting out you need to have the product done yeah they want they want everything in your eyes and yeah you can pitch them a story all you want but until they see it completed, that's what they're waiting for. You can't. You don't even get away with a pilot, I don't think anymore. Nope. Yeah, you just gotta. You, you get that whole story done. And there's and there's certain things on there. If you watch, if you watch some of those things on Shutter and stuff, mm-hmm. you'll you'll see that that first step, that first season is like, man, this is kind of gritty and grainy. And the next season, it's something like a little prettier and a little crisper. It's because Shutter's like, oh yeah, we'll support this because they got some money behind it. Yep. Because <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, sure. Yep. That's great, man. Hey, look, we bought a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy for you, my brother that's great that you are a storyteller and it was just fun listening to you tell your stories about your ideas and what you're trying to put together. I think it's amazing when someone can express themselves like that and be so excited about the stories they're trying to tell. I know exactly how you are. Cause when I start talking about an idea I got, I can't stop talking. <laughs> I will tell everybody the whole fucking thing. And they're like, well, I don't need to even see it anymore. I'm like, no, you gotta see it now, motherfucker. Because now, now you yeah. get to, you heard it. Now you get to watch it. <laughs> right. And you got, you got to go. You yeah. got to see before, it. Before, when I started, like, I didn't want to share my ideas with anybody. It was like, cause uh, I was like, ah, oh, people's going to think it's, it's going to be shit. Uh, so I'm going to keep it like, like, kind of like a ball right here. Like, yep. It's my idea. I'm not going to talk to anybody. But then I started thinking, it's like, uh, I started opening up a little bit more. And then I started getting feedbacks uh, on the scripts I wrote, write and stuff. And I have the actors read it out. And so there's one actress, I don't know if you know her, uh, Sherry Shutter. If you guys know her, she's I, from Olympia. I, think, I think I know who she is. I never met her, but I think I've seen her. 
online at least. I okay. stalk everybody. I try to. Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I usually kind of give her the script to look at it. She gives me inputs and stuff. Uh, the one we did in December, she helped me tweak the script as we were shooting and stuff, uh, move things around, and scrap some of the scenes, and uh, have it go in a different direction a little bit. So I had her uh get involved in that part too so she ended up getting credit for uh writing as well uh, when at the beginning it was like two other writers that were involved so she got the credit for writing and camera operator and so it's it's more now when i'm actually having the script and have it read out loud i even hear myself it's like oh the dialogue doesn't work right here when they're talking and stuff and then she would even sometimes says like I'm like, you know, this this dialogue itself, it doesn't work because uh, you're saying like this. And in the previous, uh, like four or five scenes ago, you said it like this. And so how does that happen? It's like, okay, let me go back now. I'm going to try to <laughs> look at it and see. And yeah. then I will go back and say, oh, yeah, this is what she was saying. And then when I got that done and she's like, now nah, that makes sense. I'm like, it, 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 it totally makes sense yeah. for me why it went from here to here now. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those fun things. Is like you know, using a script writing program. It's like which which copy do you have again? I was talking to one of our uh, one of our actresses the other day. Which copy do you have? I said, do you have the blue copy or the pink copy or mm-hmm. how many pages is yours? Is it one hundred and seventeen or one hundred pages? Which one do you have? <laughs> it's trying weird. to figure out something for some background thoughts. Absolutely, but you know, you're right, Emrique. You got to have some people. I, I I know you're feeling when you're talking about you don't want to share your idea. Because it's, it's so good and it's a secret and you don't want to hear anybody try to tell you shit. And at the same time, you want to be, a, you want to be surprised when you do make it and write it. And then they read it and they're like, holy shit. Do you feel that way? Yeah. You know, as yeah. a creator, you do feel that way, but you're right. Because if you don't have somebody out there getting your back and reading it, you're going to miss some things, you know? And, yeah. and, and I, I mean, I get the point. It was like you get uh, Hollywood directors and stuff. They're so secret when it comes to, actually shooting uh th- take uh jj abrams yep. when he did the i think the first two uh shit uh, super Star eight Trek yeah. movies, super eight didn't even know he, he uh he didn't even tell exactly where they were going for the location to mm-hmm. himself and the vehicles were like all sealed off and then they will go and then they had to come out and it's like okay what scene are we doing now right i'm like yeah just just this is your scene. That's it. That, oh, this is your lines. This is what you're going to do. And then we we'll just have to act it out. Yeah. And it was like, okay, uh, we don't know what we <laughs> had to deal with what's the scene before this. So, right. okay, we're going to try to imagine in our heads. Right. You know, and that's funny that you say that as well, because what did I do with Outrider Chuck? We we hid we kept that thing hidden. And, and who and who the fuck are we? Are nobody, we JJ no, Abrams? Nobody no, knew who the fuck we were. No one knew who we were. <laughs> nobody cared, you know, and that's the thing we all think and forget about. Like, you know, Hollywood guys, yeah, they're gonna keep the keep it on the on the low. You know, they don't want any leaks or spoilers getting out there and stuff. But I mean for us to be able to get the attention of a larger audience, we have to share. You know, even our best yeah. twist at the end of a story, I was thinking about it. I tried to keep the secret to the Outrider quiet for two years. Two years. Right. And then I started thinking to myself, why the fuck am I doing that? Because that's the best part of the movie. If I put the ending in the trailer, people would be like, oh, that looks kind of cool. I might watch it now. Right. You know, you know, sometimes you just, we're, you, we're nobody. You know, we got to make a name for ourselves. And I don't know. I kind of look at it that way now where I'm like, I'm not really going to try to hide my story. I just want people to see it. And what's the best way to get them to see it? Tell them a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like you have Will Smith just standing there going, you know, flash Will Smith on the screen. Yeah. The next thing you know, it's like, oh, something's new coming out. Right. Did I say I was nobody, by the way? Ooh. Yeah, I didn't know. I, th- I thought I said it because I'm a nobody. I think I said that. And Sam's not even in I here. Said, she she you, went you, to the bathroom, by the way. She's got a really bad stuffy nose. That's why, audience, you haven't heard Sam. She had to run out of here before I she started. To, I was about to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. She, she's. it's not you. It's her. She didn't want to interrupt by sniffling in the mics, which is fine. Um, no, you didn't say that we're nobody. You said that who knows who we are. Oh, okay. So I thought I said was nobody. Because I was going to say, you could you can mark, mark that as one of those things where I actually said that I'm like just a normal person and not like John Wick or Cobra Kai or <laughs> just sit up straight. I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's something about sitting in that corner, I'm telling you. Yeah, just put me in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and back of the bus and all those places. So, um, Rick, the other day we were talking, uh, we were doing our little quick 
uh, making sure everything worked and how everything was going to go for today. Um, you were talking about yeah. the other project that you were thinking of doing, or was it one of your instructors mentioned you should do about the difference for your family, um, for the marriage, for your marriage versus how your brother got married? Oh, um, yeah, uh, I, that's going to be part of the class that I'm going to be okay uh, in next week, uh, uh, and it's a documentary class, and, and she wanted. Uh, and me to focus on our journey of me and my wife because we had an arranged marriage and uh, and and how did that affect us uh, and our since we actually kind of grew up in a western culture and uh and because most of the family members uh they usually get married in the in uh, in india or they're too uh still in the indian culture living in america as a older age and stuff because i was i was seven when i came here and then you know having to grow up in the western culture i had to deal with the uh of trying to get myself accepted into mm -hmm. the western culture and then the 9 11 happened then i had to i was being poked fun at by from one of the guys and he was later on telling me he was it was just joking around and stuff uh because uh, the the jokes were like you know uh, your your brother your father's uh, stomach of Vietnam don't bomb the school and stuff like that so I actually had to go through that kind of situations uh, but it's not like uh, a lot of people think that uh, I am uh, a kind of guy who's not going to fight back but that is true I won't fight back but at the same time uh, I feel the hatred inside of me it's like I want to do something about it Right. but at, at one point I'm thinking to myself where is that going to lead? That's yeah. going to put me in a situation it's like I'm the bad guy too because he made me in a situation it's like I'm going to uh, I'm going to fight back about it. So uh, as I kind of grew up uh, that, uh, I used my hatred uh, and create characters and put them in situations because uh, I wanted uh, the characters to having to deal with kind of really difficult situations that I personally went through and what i would have gone through if if i had taken that that, that the side of the road yeah. and and that you cannot come out of right right you found an outlet for it yeah good for yeah. fucking you you know the fuck people man <laughs> chuck i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry there's people are fucking mean i mean they're fucking mean a lot of people aren't very mean that is some mean fucking bullshit shit Okay, you people need to stop. Okay, stop it. If you ever do that to somebody out there, just and you listen to this podcast, I better not find out about it because <laughs> that's some bullshit. That's so mean. Like my man had anything to do with that. You know that? That's dude. I'm sorry you went through it, but you know what? Good for you for fucking finding an outlet for it and doing something with it. Badass. Yeah. Good for you. See, he can. Yeah, I would have choked the motherfucker. I'd have been so mad. Aaron, Aaron's the kind of guy who responds to those people with the with the bad and the negative. Unfortunately, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I got used to. I'm going to say it on the air. You know, I got called nigger many times. Okay, many times in my life. I that word never bugged me. For some reason, I was able to not let that word bother me. I don't know why. I just was able to do it. So anytime I got some fuck <laughs> calling me that name. You know, yeah, I was able to I, just, I, I was mean, able to, even I, as growing up, I, I wasn't used, uh, I was using a lot of fuck bitch kind of words Sure. before that I wasn't using it. And, and then it kind of came to, it's like, uh, I, uh, after taking psychology classes, I was like, you know, I need to get myself out there. I need to be a uh, more like a insane kind of think of it like, <laughs> yes. uh, like the Joker and the Jim Carrey yes. mixed together. What would it be like? <laughs> uh, uh, and then, and then it's always like, all right, just let it out. Just let it out. And then I was just like, you know, all right, let's just start working on a script and just where I can just uh, be creative about it. It was like, uh, here's my side of it. Cause uh, the, the, the story I told you about, like the whole universe of a uh, anti superhero. Yeah. That character is actually, my darker side that I created. Right. And I, I, every time when I go to school, every time when I'm in a car or in the bus, I would imagine it. What if he was my alter ego and I just lost control of it. Mm -hmm. And here comes out my other darker side. And all he does is like freaking just start blowing things up or there's an enemy coming towards him. And I would just start thinking in my head, I was like, Oh, this, and then all of a sudden it's like, 
right then an idea comes pops in my head. It's like, right. okay, now I've got a, a new enemy that I want to create. Oh, I got a, a perfect way of uh, kind of like a new martial arts technique that I want to use in this film mm -hmm. or whatsoever. And then as, as it kind of progressed, I kind of started coming out with like a uh, couple of more superheroes that I want to join. And I had my little brother came up and he gave me a perfect name for uh, like my version of a uh, uh, flash. Okay. Uh, the flash. Uh, and uh, he named it nitro. I was like, Oh, perfect. Uh, and, and, and we got our, our, my own version of a speedster. And cool. uh, then I kind of created up with the, uh, uh, another superhero team, but I'm still working on it because uh, I haven't come up yet with the perfectly stuff uh, on them yet, but they will have the element of fire, earth, and water. Mm -hmm. And so they have to work together as brothers uh, to how to control the elements of uh, uh, those three elements. But uh, I, I can't, I, so far right now, I kind of came into a point where they make a cameo appearance in, uh, one of the uh, one of the films where they have to join, where the main character, the anti-hero, has to join forces with uh, as many heroes because hell is unleashed on Earth, and he has to kill all of his uh, enemies over again. And and the only way he can do that is if he join forces with uh, all the heroes that uh, uh, on Earth. At first, I while I was thinking about if I actually put that in Marvel uh, comics, uh, I would like to like see if I could use like Wolverine and the other characters, stuff like that. But then I started thinking like, it's going to be like whole kind of world uh, <laughs> that is going to be a situation with. So I started thinking in my, in my head, it was like, you know what? Now, since I'm creating my own world of it, I think I should start working on uh, uh, like a comic book uh, for my own uh, world where I can create my own characters. Absolutely. Uh, once I uh, work on this and stuff. So that way, there's be backstories on uh, these characters and uh, what kind of direction uh, th those characters will go in the comic books. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Thanks. Well, I, you got imagination, my man, and that's what you need. And you, you've got a good outlet for stuff. And I'm proud of you for taking care of your emotions and not doing crazy shit like I would want to, but I didn't. It, I, like I said before, I've been called the N word many times. I never did anything about it. One time a guy called me Prince. And that's I, such I lost my shit. <laughs> I beat his ass. Good. Because that was some clever bullshit. And then, well, well, and then that's thought, the only time, I though. I thought maybe you'd be uh, more happy if you were called the Prince. Everybody says that, too. But no, I, it really made me mad because it was clever. You see what he's saying? <laughs> he was calling me the same word in just a clever way. <laughs> that's what he was doing i was like it was too cute it was oh, just okay. cute okay. i don't like i don't like fucking cute you know keep your racist ass and your cuteness away from me that's how i felt at the time anyway so yeah his his ass got grounded into a fucking curb anyway i love you Emmerich. thanks for being on our show today my man thank you yes very I, nice I, I i always get the feeling now it's like i'm thinking about it like every act almost the same actor that i work with they always uh, after we have this shooting down I was like this is a wrap and everybody's like Amrick I love you man and they start giving me hugs it's like okay okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because you're okay. a badass motherfucker I, I usually I usually don't I usually don't like it when people start hugging me but I was like okay just Amrick open I, I, up and I, accept I, the love before I used to be like a crop kind of guy who's like yeah. And uh, Bob Olaf was like, don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. You come out of your box, my brother. <laughs> but then he was like, okay, all right, all right. I I'll give you a hug. Well, I appreciate the hug back. And then and then all the word came, uh, and the all word came. It's like, I love you, man. I love you, Emery. Next time, we got to do this. I'm like, okay, okay. I think that's too much. <laughs> that's <love>. too, much. <laughs> <laughs> too much love. Uh, Emery, buddy, where can people find your stuff? Where Where's all your goodies at? Uh, it, uh, people can... Find it on tube and uh, search Amrik Pablo one, and you'll see the image of me uh, with a shirt. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, people can go to IMDb and search my name, okay, uh, and see the credits and stuff. And uh, I did win a couple of awards, including for life. And uh, the assassinators that I did last year, we won what three. Two awards for best uh, best recognition and one for best writing. 
for that. Uh, and then uh, we're waiting to see for Wednesdays to see what we win, if we win. How's that? Uh, after that's done and it gets released and stuff, are you putting that on YouTube, or is that something you're going to be looking to put out for distribution? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be putting that on YouTube. I did submit it to two other film festivals: one for Port Townsend uh, Film Festival, and uh, there's one. It's uh, I think I did submit it to a film festival in Italy. Right on. Very good, man. And then people who are listening to this and they want to reach out to you since you're a local guy also, um, how can they find you? Are you on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, MySpace? Yes. Omaha uh, Mama? On Facebook, you can search me as Emmerich, uh, Emmerich S. Pablo. And on Instagram, it's through my uh, my my company, uh, Legendary Studios LLC. Uh, it's one of my dream production companies that I want to do. So... Uh, just a heads up, don't get confused with Legendary Pictures. I called it a Legendary Studios. <laughs> I got you, so man. that way people don't get confused. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> well, good luck to you, my friend. I hopefully talk again and meet soon. Again, okay? All right, thank you. You keep doing your thing, brother. Good job. But first, I will, let me first start by saying thank you, Omri, for joining us this evening for a... I, it's usually a cup of coffee and a conversation, but like Aaron had a drink. I'm drinking water because I can't drink coffee this late because I'll be up peeing all night because I'm 100 years old. Had a drink. Uh, I drank mine already. I'm sorry. Okay. And then I don't know what Sam that. had. Sam just had whatever I had downstairs. I just kept pouring until yeah. it made something that she could drink. Yep. Warm her up. That's right. Uh, but no, thank you for joining us today for a conversation, buddy. It's been great getting to know you. Um, you have a lot of passion behind what everything that you're saying and everything that you're starting and get got going, and it's it's fun to listen to. And uh, you're going to be a, a fun star to watch as we move and forward. Definitely. And I also want to, before I even, uh, before we head out, uh, I wanted to say, like, I'm going to try my best to help out as, as many actors uh, in the Pacific Northwest to see if there's a way for us to bring uh, more productions up here instead of going to Vancouver, BC and stuff. So uh, I'm, I still have this passion of a project that I want to do and that will help uh, and see the Washington and the uh, filmmakers here. And uh, uh, it's a documentary that I have to figure out how am I going to get the uh, funding to make that happen? I did, uh, few, did a few interviews with some of the actors, and it's based on, uh, on like the struggle of, of filmmakers in Washington State, opposed to uh, uh, Hollywood, and them shooting in Georgia, New Mexico, Vancouver, and what's going on with uh, why Washington State is not at the level that it used to be back in the 90s. And so what can we do to help bring more initiative up here in Washington to bring more productions up here rather than one movie a year right. uh, that is only a low budget but only bring more people from down from LA to do it and only hire like maybe one or two crew members or one or two actors to do it. Mm -hmm. So and if you're going to do a film, hire more people here and if the movie is going to set in Seattle, do it in Seattle. Why do we need to have B-rolls <laughs> of Space Needle, and, but they shoot it in Oregon or do Vancouver? Yeah. I'm with you, man. Yeah. Well, you know where it starts? It starts with people like us that yeah. join together. We, You know what? They aren't going to help us. We'll do it ourselves. We'll make that shit. Yeah. Join together. We've See, got yeah. enough credit up here of people that can the, do it. Uh, your, your mindset is in the right spot because that's Absolutely. what this is. CCC Entertainment Group, that's what we are. We are a creative, collaborative coalition. That's right. Join together, everybody. That's Thanks. right. Thanks, Omri. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. All right. All right. See you guys. See you later, man. Thanks for tuning Wait. in. Remember, everybody, think hard because you're thinking anyway. Oh, for the love of Christ, both of you guys. He just cut me off, though. Just cut me off. Yeah, nobody, yeah, because, nobody needs to hear the old intro. Okay, well, outro. I'm going to cut you both off and say thank you for listening to our show. Thank you for tuning into Around the Real. That's great stuff. Yeah. So why did they uh, even tune in in the first place? I don't know, but they're glad they did. Yeah. I think it's because we're trying to inspire people. We are. And have fun with people. People that are artists. Creatives. Yeah. People that are out there trying to make a living with their art. That's a beautiful thing. That's what we're doing. They're yes. crafty. Yeah. Yes. 